Well, hey, Cove. Dan Baumgartner here with a Wednesday update. Hey, Cove. Hi. <laughs> you know, you have been super busy in your yes. studio. Do you know how mm -hmm. I know that? How? Oh. Because there's a very large addition on my mm -hmm. side of the garage. Oh, yes. My studio is way over there, and I needed more space. Well, let's talk about this. Yeah, this is... Um, I did a piece for downtown um, Santa Rosa, which is up on um, 4th Street, and I had a bunch of extra materials. So I got a hold of Kirsten and Beverly and asked them what they thought about me just using some of the materials to make a big outdoor um, outside piece for Christmas and Christmas Eve. At the Cove? So, yeah, at the Cove. Yeah, so this is being made here and transported. We're not sure how, <laughs> but it's going to get six feet tall and six feet wide. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be go it's a big out, star. Outside of the coat? Yeah, outside. Yeah, nice. Yes. It's pretty weatherproof. It's painted and okay. spray painted. And when will stuff. this be installed so that people will see it? This, this weekend. weekend. So sure. next week should be up, and then we'll leave it up to New Year's. And so, so cool. It'll, it'll, the it. neighborhood can see it, and then if we're, we're when we're out at Christmas Eve, we can have it be near us. And Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. It's good. Wow. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Just coming in to say hi. Talk <laughs> to you later. <laughs> bye. Bye. So, uh, Covites, been thinking a lot about, um, you know, there is a lot of things that we are missing this year, and it's getting talked about a lot. Uh, we, in particular, right now in this time of year, we are missing our kids in a big way. And um, I think I've mentioned before, usually we would have gone to New York by now and had a week with all of the kids in, in New York City. And uh, there's a lot of traditions around that that, that I'm missing. Uh, one of the traditions that I actually love a lot more than any of them, because I am kind of a junkie for Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol. So every year we're back there at Christmas, I go to the Morgan Library and uh, they own the original manuscript of Charles Dickens for A Christmas Carol. And uh, every year now they bring it out in a case and all, but they they carefully turn one page of it. So uh, this year, that is on page four. And let me just pause because I have a picture of what is out in the library right now. So I'm gonna, we're gonna just show you the slide of that real quick. This is Dickens' own handwriting. So you can see how he has crossed out all sorts of things and added all sorts of things. And, and this, is, uh, this is on that page right here where Scrooge's nephew says, uh, I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time when it has come around, apart from the veneration due its sacred name and origin, I've always thought of it as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time, the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut up hearts freely. And then the, the nephew continues and uh, Scrooge, of course, gets very irritated. But we're missing uh, some tra traditions. We're missing our kids. We're missing our travel. Uh, now, certainly, there are lots of people in the world and in the United States that are, that are, are have it way worse, right? They're grieving loss. People are sick. Uh, economics are super difficult. So there, there are a lot of hard things going on. And I think it's important for us, no matter whether we're here on that loss scale or, or something less, uh, to simply have the freedom to name it, to be able to say, uh, this, is, this is painful, this is hard. And there's, there's a lot of good, healthy things about just, just naming reality for what it is. Uh, but one of the things that's good about doing that is that it sets up a real contrast on the other side. On the one hand, we have, we have some loss and pain and, and grief, which, which we name and we kind of put out there and we give that to God. Uh, but it's also this contrast to this word that I love in the Advent and Christmas season, which is hope, which is hope. Uh, such a contrast. And it's at, at this time of year that we can see this year even more clearly, I think, the hope that we have in Christ, that God actually is with us. The, the hope that we have a future, that's what hope is, the assurance of a future. And because of Christ, we have a future, both 
both on this earth and, and beyond this earth. So uh, I want to just encourage you in this season, this season even as you, you name and acknowledge uh, things you wish were different, uh, that you also then kind of flip and look at the hope that we have in Christ, because that's really what we are celebrating in this season during any year. So there's, there's a couple things that uh, I want to just remind you of going on at the Cove. One of them is the St. Nick Project, and that's the deacons are doing that, and uh, they have a list of people who are just particularly in need or have kids uh, in need and are without resources at this time uh, during the year. Uh, the St. Nick Project is, is trying to match up uh, some gifts with those people who are in need, and, and we really need your help for this because the clock is kind of ticking. And uh, you, need to, you need to get your gifts and you need to take them to the Cove on Sunday between 1 and 2 o'clock. That's the drop-off time. So this is Wednesday, that's Sunday. We still have uh, a need for people to sign up for some of those things. And I'm gonna, we're going to show you this slide that has the email addresses for Skip and Sally. And that's how you start this process. So that would be awesome if you could email them. They'll tell you, uh, show you what the needs are that remain, and you can sign up and then uh, shop and get your gift to the Cove on Sunday between 1 and 2 o'clock. The other thing I wanted to remind you of is Christmas Eve. Uh, keep your fingers crossed. It looks like, at least in the long-range forecast, that the weather will be decent, uh, and we are going continuing on with plans to do a approved uh, with all the COVID restrictions approved uh, outdoor worship time outdoors uh, it'll be short about a half an hour on Christmas Eve at five o'clock uh, will be distanced uh, you need to wear a mask uh, you need to dress warmly because these nights are you know getting down into the 30s uh, and if you want to bring a chair for that half hour, a lawn chair, uh, feel free to do that. The one thing I want you to not forget, though, is to bring a flashlight of some kind with you. Because we're actually going to utilize flashlights uh, in place of candles outdoors on Christmas Eve. So uh, if you feel like you can make it and, and that that's a, a good and safe place to be, we'll, we'll be doing it uh, according to all the safeguards. So I have a lot of confidence in that. Uh, if you feel like you just can't do that or uh, there's other issues in getting there, there is going to be a live stream of that time, and then, and then that live stream will be recorded. Uh, and we'll send out the link for that uh, the day before, so next week on Wednesday, uh, Christmas Eve being on Thursday. So uh, one way or the other, we look forward to joining together in worship on Christmas Eve. God bless you, and uh, stay safe. Bye-bye.